Before we begin today's AGM meeting, we'd like to acknowledge that UFE, Student Union Society, is located on ancestral, unceded, and current homelands of Hakoelum speaking stolen nation, and to extend our appreciation for the opportunity to live, work, and learn in this territory. My name is Vlad, I'm the current board chair for SUS. In today's attendance, we have Ashley McDougall, our president, Jaden Hovey, our vice president external, Gabriela Sink, our Vice President Students, Olivia Lake de Meza, our Executive Director, and in the audience you will also see Mehmet, who are student rep at large, thank you Mehmet, and Nikhila jo uh, Jacobs, who is also our student rep at large. Before we begin our today's meeting, I'd like to just give a few pointers here. Uh, there might be a few people that never attended AGMs or meetings of this sort, so it could be very helpful. Um, something you've probably seen when you walked in, everybody got a number. Um, that number, what it's gonna be used for is for all the motions that are gonna be happening today. So we'll have a few motions, and during that time, what we ask you to do is just simply lift up the piece of paper with your number you have in front of you, which will signify your voting for that motion. Uh, just easier way for us to track who voted and what number voted. And we just please ask you to hold it up in space so we can see it clearly for a few seconds here. Also, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who is able to attend today. Uh, it means a lot to all of us, the team that has been working on this presentation and just the entire year on all the plans that are happening for Student Union Society. So super excited to get the meeting rolling here. And uh, we have officially met our quorum. Again, thank you, everybody. And um, for all the voting that will be happening, again, for the people that might not have participated in meetings of this sort, uh, we'll, do, we'll have motions and we'll ask for first person to lift up um, a motion sign, which is your number again, which will signify that you're moving the motion, and the seconder will be a second person again, lifting up your uh, number to signify that as well. Jumping into the official beginning of the meeting, uh, we'll call the meeting to order at 12.19. Be it resolved that the 2024 SUS AGM is approved as presented, can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Can I have a first person for that? Okay, motion will have been moved by number 33. Can I have a seconder for that? 49, thank you. Is there any discussion regarding the agenda as presented today? Okay, all those in favor to approve the agenda? And thank you, thank you. Uh, all those, Opposed to approve the agenda? Okay, agenda has been approved as presented. Thank you. Another item on our agenda is approval of the AGM 2023 minutes from last year. Be it resolved the 2023 SUS AGM minutes are approved as presented. Can I also have a motion to, can I have a first person to motion uh, mover for this agenda item? Number 13, thank you. And can I have a seconder? Number 30, thank you. Uh, any discussion regarding the minutes from 2023? Okay. All those in favor to approve the AGM 2023 minutes? Okay. Thank you. All those opposed? Okay. Amazing. AGM 2023 minutes have been presented. Uh, now, we always have to ask, is there any conflict of interest disclosures that we have in the audience regarding any of the items on the agenda as presented today? Okay, hearing none, we can proceed to our very first point on the agenda, our uh, special presentations and discussions. And the first item on our agenda is our, um, our auditor and Apologize for that. Be it resolved that Grant Thornton be appointed auditor for the 2024-2025 financial year. Can I have a mover for that motion? Number nine, thank you for moving. And number 33, thank you for seconding. Uh, do we have any discussion regarding that item? Okay, all those in favor to approve uh, this motion? Thank you. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. 
So be it resolved, the Grant Thornton has been appointed the auditor for 2024-2025 financial year. Thank you. Now, jumping into our presentation for the first item on the agenda, you will notice on a screen behind me the audited 2022-2023 financial statements, and I'll pass it off. Hello, hello. Everyone can hear me all right? Awesome. I'll wait for, the, wait for these to load up, but uh, for anyone who doesn't know me, my name's Trevor, and I'm a manager with Grant Thornton in the assurance practice uh, out of Vancouver. And uh, I'm happy to be here today, uh, standing here in front of you, just to give a brief summary of the uh, 2020 through 23 uh, financial results for this is so. <laughs> And maybe what I'll get is just a, uh, oh. <laughs> Why don't I go, I'll go, perf I'll go performer style and then I uh, just do the uh, mic here. Uh, and maybe what I'll get is a, uh, yeah. okay. There we go. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but uh, it's good to be back uh, in a school environment and uh, great to see such a great turnout. Um, and I'll, I'll run through briefly here just the, the financial statements for the, year ended uh, March 1, 2023. And so just a brief overview here, and we'll start with the uh, auditor's report. So um, typically what we'll, what we'll have here is just uh, our opinion on the financial statements in each year, and just happy to note that in the first section here, um, us as, as uh, Grant Thornton are, are proud to um, to note that uh, we have a clean opinion, uh, meaning that the um, financial statements results operations for the year ended uh, March 31, 2023 are presented fairly under uh, the Canadian uh, accounting standards for nonprofit uh, enterprises, which would be SUS here. And I'll, I'll flip right to the, uh, the statements of uh, revenue expenses. So, just a brief kind of overview that it was another uh, strong year for, for SUS and showing an, an upturn um, coming out of uh, years in COVID as well. Um, the, the financial statements are presented just on a basis of the general operating uh, fund, as you can see in the first, first column there, as well as the membership fund. Um, and denoted, and you can at the bottom you can see they're uh, consistent with the year previous. Uh, there is a surplus noted um, in the bottom, and typically what we'll what we'll see is uh, revenues uh, increasing from uh, the fees. Or sorry, I can't. Um, and strong increase in uh, health and dental fees, as well as uh, building in UPass and then related uh, expenses as well. Uh, for the statement of financial position, you can see again um, strong strong numbers in terms of the uh, current and total assets of of SUS, um, cash position, as well as uh, some short term investments earning earning us uh, some returns as well. And then um, pretty consistent year over year in terms of the payables and then paying down a uh, long-term uh, loans with, uh, with financial institution. And then the, at the bottom noted is the uh, net assets of each fund, um, which gets summarized here as well. So pretty, pretty typical year um, for, for SUS and another um, strong, strong year in terms of the um, results of operations. 
resulting in an increase in the, uh, the net assets similar to the 2022 year end. Um, there, I don't, I'm not going to go through the notes, I think, in, in too much detail, but um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer now or save for the question period uh, later on. Thank you very much. And again, we do have a Q&A period at the very end, so if some questions do arise throughout, just note them down and we'll be sure to uh, answer any of those questions you might have at the very end. Awesome. So jumping into our next item, the agenda, our bylaw presentation, uh, if I'll pass it off. Thank you. Um, yes, so welcome everyone. My name is Ashley McDougall and I am the Student Union Society President. Um, so yeah, today we have two bylaw changes that we have motions to approve. If we could, oh. um, so the first bylaw change is um, bylaw 3.1.2.1. Um, so as you can see, the current bylaw um, reads student registered in non-Senate approved continuing education courses and or programs. Um, this line is part of our definition um, of students who do not pay SUS fees. So um, in this case, it's, it's typically talking about students who are in less than 100 level university programs and um, they, are, they are not charged SUS fees. So in our proposed change, 3.1.2.1, it reads students registered in non-credit bearing continuing education courses and or programs instead. Um, so the key change there is non-credit bearing rather than um, non-Senate approved. Um, the reason for this is that previously most continuing education programming was not approved by Senate, only um, the credit bearing programs were. Um, so this, however, has been changed and now all continuing education programming is overseen by Senate. Um, so under the University Act, UFE does not consider con all continuing education registrants as students, rather it assigns fees only to those in credit bearing programs or courses. Um, so that is the reason for this change. The next bylaw change we're looking at is 20.10. Um, so this change is simply a typo that um, was accidentally included in the last revision of the bylaws where it reads um, members of the board must be elected appointments other than those described in sections 21.9 and 21.10 are not permitted to fill vacancies. Um, this is actually just meant to read 20.9 and 20.10 rather than 21.9 and 21.10. Um, 21.9, 21.10 are not actually even bylaws. So this is just a change to reflect the accuracy of what our bylaws read. Um, so yeah, that is all our bylaw changes and I would be happy to take questions in the discussion period. Thank you very much, Ashley. For the motion for the bylaw presentation vote, be it resolved that changes to SAS bylaws 3.1.2.1 and 20.11 are approved as presented. Can I have a motion to approve? 33 as the first and 16 as a seconder. Thank you. Discussion items. Uh, do you have any discussion or questions for Ashley or the team? Seeing none. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, motion has been passed, thank you. For the next item on the agenda, our election policy changes. I'll pass it off to you, Jaden. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll do this. Okay, a couple small changes, nothing really too major uh, regarding SUS elections, the annual elections. Um, the big thing was um, updating ter usage around uh, electoral officer. We used to have a position called the chief electoral officer or CEO. 
Uh, that's no longer a position. It's now the, just the electoral officer or EO. So you'll see a couple of um, changes there in terms of wording. One thing to note here in uh, 1.1, 1 .1, for one, yeah, or yes, um, we're moving the approval of uh, extending the time frame from the president to the executive director. The reason why we want to do that is because uh, presidents are involved in the elections, the annual elections uh, at SUS. Uh, we want to remove anybody who might have a conflict of interest from any policies uh, as much as possible. So no approvals will be done by any member who's up for re-election. Therefore, it's being moved to the executive director. Um, next one. Uh, down at the bottom, you'll see uh, that it, on your nomination package, thank you for zooming, uh, on your, the nomination package, uh, you would require either a signed letter of recommendation from UFE faculty and one student signature, or um, you would require five student signatures. And we've included a new line that says that candidates may only acquire one of those five signatures to be from a sitting member of the board. Uh, that's just to ensure that there's no um, inside, you know, people are only getting signatures from current members of the board. They actually have to go and get uh, signatures from students as well. Um, definitions. Uh, the next one that's important to note um, is on this page. Um, just that a bylaw has to be, or sorry, a by election has to be called if there are fewer than three student representative at large positions currently sitting on the board. Um, that is put into writing just to make sure that there's not a situation where there's no student representatives or very few student representatives at large on the board, uh, and SUS is not calling a by-election to fill those vacancies. So if there's fewer than three, uh, it now says that a by-election must be called. Th uh, those are all the major changes. Thank you. Thank you, Jaden. Be it resolved, the election policy updates are approved as presented. Can I have a mover on this motion? Number six, thank you. Can I have a second on this motion? Number two, thank you. Uh, discussion, do you have any questions for Jaden or the team? Seeing none, all those in favor to approve agenda? Thank you. Any opposed? Okay, great. It has been approved. Um, election policy updates are approved as presented. Thank you, everybody. For the next item on our agenda, we're jumping into our budget presentation by Olivia and Karen. Just Karen. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, my name is Karin. I'm the finance manager here for the University of Fraser Valley Student Union Society. I'll be going over the 2024 to 25 budget for the upcoming fiscal year. So without any further ado, I'll jump into it here. So just to start off, we have a couple definitions here just so everyone's on the same page moving forward. Our funds are broken into two categories. So we have our operations funds, which is our unrestricted, as well as our membership fund, which is the restricted funds. So the the operations funds used for the day-to-day -day operations of the Student Union Society at the discretion of the Board of Directors. So anything that's managerial or required for the operation of the society would come out of that fund there. And the membership fund is a restricted fund area where all the funds that come in are for the restricted departments that they fall into and the funds can't be used without the Board of Directors approval there. Moving forward into the budget basics, so just a little bit of an accounting lesson here. These are two of the major reports we use to assess the budget throughout the year. So we have our income statement and our balance sheet report. Our income statement, it reviews our, our cash in, cash out, revenues and expenses over a period of time. So this is viewed over the fiscal year, sometimes monthly, just to forecast where our budget's at. And um, it's been used quite extensively in the report here today. We also have our balance sheet. So that's kind of a snapshot of where we are at a certain time period. Um, you'll see that I'll make a mention to that when we get into our unrestricted funding. 
but that kind of will let you know where we are today or any point in time uh, with our revenues and expenses. So just breaking down the departments here. So we have the general operations, so that's funded by the membership fee. Uh, it covers the main costs of the society. Everything operational, high level, comes out of the general operations. We have our programming budget, which is the surplus from the gen ops. So this is for events, programs, all the fun stuff we have going on around campus. Uh, clubs and associations, that's moving into our unrestricted uh, area, our restricted funding area. So that's allocated from the or, uh, ordinary resolution passed in January 2023. We don't generate any income or revenue for the clubs and associations. So what you'll see over the year is just the asset of the cash decreasing as money is spent. Moving into the UPASS, so that's the transit and recreational costs. We have a student transportation budget, so that's the inter-campus shuttle, as well as safe driving initiatives we have for our team here and uh, our students as well. The health and dental budget, so that's the cost to cover the student insurance plan. Uh, we have our food bank as well, so that's the, the cost to facilitate the food bank, also out of restricted as well. Fairgrounds, which is our cafe here right next door, so they, they actually don't receive a fee. They operate on the revenue that they generate through the cafe's operations throughout the year. The contracted services, so that's IT contracts, any services that we do out to U of E, any major services we need throughout anything that could be required on campus comes out of that budget there. We have our sub facilities budget, so that's the cost to operate our student union building, this building we have here, and the student refugee program. So that's the cost to sponsor a refugee student over to Canada for the first year and cover all their expenses for that first year. All right, so we're gonna move into the general operations here, which is the unrestricted funds. So I'm gonna break, our revenue is broken down into three different categories here. I'll briefly go over that with you guys. So our membership fees is the large bulk of the revenues there. So that's come from the students. Um, so last year we're looking at $1,034,600. With our most recent, uh, the winter semester, $40.13 a student. The revenue we have earned, that's revenue that's bulk of that is gonna be earned from renting our spaces. So we have spaces throughout the building that are rented out to external parties and we generate revenue that way. Looking at around 125,000 for the year. Our passive income, so this could be, we have some interest, some investments, some interest gained on our bank accounts. So this is just revenue we gain throughout the year um, based on what we have. This doesn't require any, any output from the team here or anything like that. We're looking at $86,593 for that. All right, so the general operations payroll. So this is the large bulk of where our spending goes. It's to support our team here. We have 13 full-time staff members in permanent roles, four elected 2024 a year. You'll notice that the payroll budget is lower than last year because last year we had budgeted for additional positions. They weren't deemed necessary to our operating budget and therefore they remained unfulfilled. So we're looking at a, a general operations payroll budget of $822,954 for the year. So I've broken apart the programming into four different uh, events we have going on here. I'm sure everyone's very excited about. So the first one being kickback. Kickback is a huge event we have here, typically around September every year. Um, we've allocated $28,250 towards that. Our student perks program, we have 7,600 allocated towards that. Um, the community engagement initiative, there's 25,450 allocated there. And for Chilliwack, we have 20,460 allocated for that event there. So I'm just gonna go over a high level view of the unrestricted funds. So from our revenue, we're looking at a revenue of $1,254,159 minus the payroll of $822,954 minus the operational costs of $339,784, and finally minusing out the programming costs of $81,760, leaving us with a remaining surplus of $9,661 approximately throughout the year. All right, so just gonna move into the restricted funds portion here of general operations. So clubs and associations being our first one here, we have split it up across into three different categories that are required for the support of clubs and associations. The first one being the platform. Uh, our clubs and association teams use a software called QPay. The annual cost for that is 16,300 for that and any other resources they need to support them in a software basis. Um, the activities, so that's making stuff happen like the events and the funds, uh, the, the club, club funding. 
So that's 32,610 for the year. And then we also have a support category, which is towards the resource support and including our staffing, which is $52,833 for the year. And the rest of the service is broken down here into the revenues and expenses. So we have the UPASS, um, the revenue there is 1.122631. And minusing out the expenses, we have a surplus of $31,355. The student transportation, we have the revenue of 843,000, minusing out the expenses of 724,000. We have a surplus of almost 120,000 there. So with the, the student transportation budget, our Expenses are expected to fluctuate as gas costs will change and things will go up through the year. So we have left that uh, surplus there for the time being just to gain initiative to see how we, we can change our uh, shuttle program moving forward, perhaps explore the op option of having additional shuttles put into play as well. Um, for the health and dental, we have $1,506,184 as a revenue, the expenses of $1,338,887 leaving us with a surplus of $167,297. And the, finally, the food bank, we have $41,571, and with a final uh, deficit of $4,079. So a lot of these figures is where the income statement report that I initially mentioned comes into play. Things will change throughout the year. Um, so when, when we need to look at things at a snapshot in time, these are kind of the numbers we have here but they all fluctuate throughout the year based on how expenses may change or revenue changes throughout the year. So our remaining services here, we have contracted services, which is budgeted for a revenue of $131,243, minus the expenses of $133,740 for a deficit of $2,497. Our sub-facilities, so this is the building budget once again, um, it's $916,000 and $5 for the revenue with the expenses of 517,799, and then we have a remaining surplus of $398,207. So for the revenue, uh, the, the surplus for the facilities, we keep that as a contingency fund for any unforeseen maintenance problems or anything that may come with the building. So that's currently kept there as a contingency. And the student refugee, we have revenue of $551,640. Uh, with expenses of $48,550 and a remaining surplus of $3,090. And I just wanted to touch on the endowments in the final touches here. So the endowment is simply described as it's a donation from a, towards a nonprofit organization um, that leads to another purpose. So we as us, we're a proud UFE donor, um, donating towards four events we have here with the, the UFE. So that's the Student Union Society Endowment Scholarship, the Student Union Leadership Award. Um, we have our Student Union Society Endowment Bursary Award and the Ethel Gardner Memorial Endowment Bursary. So the main purpose of these is to generate awards to support our students. Last year, they generated 11 awards per year, um, and the total came out to $3,750. Yep, that's all. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions in the question answer per uh, period. Thank you very much, Karen. Moving to the next item on our agenda, our 2023-2024 annual report. Over to you, Olivia. Okay, so um, welcome to the annual report. So this report is purely a high-level overview of all of the work that we've been up to this year. A more detailed report will be published later on this week and will be available on the website. Um, so it's been a very busy year. We've been up to a lot. So uh, I've tried to condense it as, uh, as, as much as I can. Um, so yeah, good to, oh. Should have looked at this before. Stuff. 
Okay, so every year um, the executive come to board with um, a plan for how to spend our budget with a particular focus in mind. Uh, so we focus usually on one of the items from our strategic plan and this year um, our focus was on growth. So that's not spending more money, but kind of, as you see from the picture, nurturing what we have and growing our programs and expanding them. So. Um, we aim to do this by expanding our programs, increasing our engagement with the community, uh, developing the infrastructure to support high quality uh, delivery of our services. Um, and uh, as I say before, the, this is just a high level overview. So, um, first of all, I just want to give credit to all of our team members. Uh, this was a picture taken at Backyard Bash of most of our full-time staff, but not all of them. We're missing a few here. Uh, and my five-year-old son is photobombed in the front there too. Um, but yeah, I uh, just want to give credit to our team um, for all the work that they've done. So this report is based on their work. Um, so, marketing communications, our first team. Um, this is a picture of, their, of the team there. Um, so, they introduced a monthly email newsletter, What's Happening. Hopefully, you have seen it and opened it. If not, maybe open it the next time. Um, our opening rate's 38%. Um, doesn't seem very high, but the average email opening rate for marketing is only 22%. So, we're, we're pretty happy with a 38% um, uh, average. We sent out over 12 surveys this year to gather feedback on events, programs, and policies, grabbing your thoughts off um, Instagram polls and such. We also added Track the Shuttle. Uh, we had over 3,500 people view that. So that's um, our app that allows you to see where the shuttle is at any one time. Um, and if you haven't downloaded that and you would feel that it was useful, you can go to our website or on the um, television uh, on the screen by the door there, there's a QR code you can download for that. Our website was viewed an astonishing 185,000 times. Um, and we had an average of 80 Instagram stories per month and almost 34,000 profile visits. We also expanded our partnerships to in include support of UFE International, the Career Fair, Le Lem to Baker for the Know Your Rights um, campaign, clubs and associations, UFE alumni, and library services. So onto our programs and services team. So starting off with our campus shuttle. Um, in June, we started our new contract with Luxury Transport, sometimes referred to as Luxbus. Um, and we expanded the contract to 16 round trips. So there were 38,640 rides taken in 2023, which is a record for the shuttle bus service since it was um, big, uh, originally started. We also added Wi-Fi, GPS tracking, and bike racks to um, all the shuttles and we started a new campus cruise program. So the campus cruise program is for um, people with um, diverse abilities. Um, we acknowledge that riding the shuttle for the first time could be quite challenging, especially at the beginning of the school year. So there's an opportunity for people to come and um, bring someone with them, do a dry run of the shuttle, um, get some detailed information about the shuttle, and also see where the stops are. Um, and so they feel better prepared to start um, the fall. So we'll be running that again this year. Okay, health and dental. So we continued with our health and dental plan. Uh, we use um, two platforms or two or, um, yeah platforms on our app called Empower Me and Dialogue. Um, Empower Me is the 24/7 mental health support service, and then Dialogue is the service which allows 24/7 access to a GP and other health practitioners. We were able originally we set these up as pilot projects, um, and they were going to go to uh, an additional cost at some point. However, we've managed to keep that within the uh, current fees. So we continue them to run at no additional cost to yourselves. Uh, we have also established an on-site student care rep um, that it comes the first Wednesday of every month. Uh, so they're here to answer any specific student care, health and dental questions that you may have, in addition to our team that's uh, here Monday through to Friday. Uh, and we established some uh, improved tracking on our call escalation. So basically that means that anyone that has some issues with their health and dental plan and not getting uh, a reply or not getting kind of the answers directly from student care, um, they can come to us and we will track the complaint through to its resolution. 
okay, the UPASS. Um, so this UPASS kind of is a self-sufficient program, but wanted to, to touch on it. So we expanded the uh, UPASS distribution hours to include TTC in Chilliwack. Um, prior to that, anyone from TTC had to go over to CEP, um, but now we have dedicated um, resources in TTC to distribute um, during the beginning of the semesters. Um, and we have also been preparing for UMO, which I will talk about later, um, but that is a rollout for summer 2024 and will be the new contactless app for the UPASS. Um, this year, um, with the BC Transit strike that happened at the end of last year, beginning of this financial year, 2023, um, we also acknowledged that there was um, issues around um, transportation, so we established the Walmart shuttle um, as part of our response to that. So every Wednesday there is a shuttle that goes from outside of Lem to Baker to Walmart. Uh, clubs and associations, so we opened the clubhouse this year on the second floor and added QPay to help with the administration of that um, program. Uh, we also developed lots of new policies to support the effective running of CNAs. We're also aware that we want to improve as, we, um, as we've kind of started the journey of, of taking that um, back on again. Um, and so we are actually setting up some focus groups in the coming months to get feedback from all of the executives um, to figure out how we can do things better. And um, yeah, and listen, we've heard what you've said. We're making adaptions accordingly and we'll continue to do so. Um, so events, we hosted 66 events in 2023. Um, so these included, the, this was only just a portion of them, obviously, um, but Summerfest, Kickback, Pub Nights, um, Friendship Bracelet Making, we did pizza parties, we did the Angel Tree Program, which we do every year, Paint Nights, um, Moose Hide Campaign, and Remembrance Day, the International Day of Happiness. We ran a couple of pop-up vaccine clinics. We ran the Health and Wellness Week and more recently Backyard Bash in Chilliwack. So when I uh, was doing this um, PowerPoint, I saw the number 66 and I thought, some of you are gonna be thinking about the Fraser Valley Express when you see that number. So just to make a side note, uh, to mention that the Fraser Valley Express, um, this year with the UPASS, um, it's been a bit of a quiet year from BC Transit with the BC strike, which lasted much longer than we had all wanted it to. And um, also the um, rollout of the new UMO contactless app. Um, but I just want to let you know that it's a project that we're very passionate about and uh, want to see to fruition. So we are still looking at um, getting the UPASS extension to the um, to include the Fraser Valley Express and we'll be working hard to um, make that happen as soon as possible. Student perks. So um, hopefully you're all aware, but if you're not with student perks, um, our goal is to work with local businesses to um, create ongoing partnerships and to offer you um, extra discounts, various promotions um, throughout the throughout the city. So it includes Abbotsford, Langley, Mission, and Chilliwack. So this year we added some new um, companies to that. We've got Stormies um, in Chilliwack, the Sprouted Oven up the road, um, Sip Try, and Dead Frog Brewery in Langley. Um, so just so you're aware of the um, the other things that are included, there's a, there's a huge list there, but we include the Flitness Lab, Town Hall in Abbotsford, Smoking Gun, uh, Local Space in Chilliwack, the Exit Rooms, and Burger Burger have all got um, good student discounts. So again, you can check out our website for that, show your student ID, and you will get a deal. Okay, moving on to facilities operations, starting with Fairgrounds. So Fairgrounds had its busiest year um, since we opened in 2016. Um, a lot of that has to do with the change in food services on campus. So we do acknowledge that with the closure of the craft cafeteria, there are limited um, uh, areas to get food on campus. So um, just some interesting stats. We sold over 1,700 cups of the 16 ounce latte. That is the most popular drink by far. Uh, most popular food item, breakfast bagel, an egg and cheese one, and the jumbo muffins. Um, and the fairgrounds kitchen is now complete. It will open in the summer. We just went for the final um, health and safety sign off. Uh, and that will allow us to have an expanded menu, um, much more items coming. So that's very exciting. And that's been a huge project, um, building a kitchen out of what was a storage cupboard. We'll also have a grand opening for that sometime this year too. So going on to our sub lounge. 
So we've got weekly programming, um, including our popular sus um, socials. We had over 140 who attended our pizza event. We weren't prepared for that, but we will be next time. We did have enough pizza for everybody. Um, but yes, uh, it was that was a super busy event. And so yeah, our sub lounge weekly, you probably can't uh, read that too uh, good from your seats there, but we have Mario Mondays, Tabletop Tuesdays, Wellness Wednesdays, Social Thursdays, and oh, thank you, and uh, Free Time Fridays. So there's something happening in the sub every day of the week. And uh, yeah, if you haven't checked it out yet, please come by. Uh, looking into facilities, um, one of our incomes that you heard Karen um, talk about was the income generated or revenue from uh, rentals. So this year for our rentals, we had 34 um, rentals from UFE, uh, 44 room bookings. Some of those room bookings don't generate income. We offer rooms free for students. Um, three long-term leases. So that's for um, uh, Valley Church that meets on here in the Everett Hall on a Sunday. Um, that is the contract with Dana on the um, restaurant formerly known as Streets, as we say. And then um, also the multi-faith prayer room is a long-term lease with UFE on the third floor. So yeah, just to mention that the Streets contract did um, finish last year, but we were able to offer that space to UFE to make it into what's the currently the Korean street food cafe. Um, so we're pleased that we could offer space um, for that um, during construction. Uh, we also, as a side note, had one Hallmark movie, uh, which was very interesting. It was during reading break in February, and for those who were on campus, it was fun while it started, and then it was quite interesting hearing people yelling and screaming and <laughs> various things. As uh, yeah, So uh, I don't know the name of the movie, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably post it on Instagram when we let you know and you can see the Everett Hall and around the campus. But um, yeah, and then also uh, Abbotsford TEDx was the first time that they've been back since COVID. So it was great to host them too. And finally, just looking ahead. So um, although at the AGM we do talk about the, the year past, I think it's good to note of things that are on the agenda. So we've got two brand new shuttles coming in May. So they will replace the older buses. They will be slightly larger. They will be fully accessible. And they will be brand new 2023, 2024 buses. Um, so they are getting delivered. And they will also be, um, uh, they will have the, a new logo printed on. So we're pretty excited by that. Um, we will have, as I mentioned before, an expanded fairgrounds menu. Um, we have put more investment in student funding than ever before. So that is for clubs and associations and also for awards, um, endowments and bursaries. Um, we are continuing with our monthly ad hoc free grab and go food offerings. So once a month we have been doing samosas, but there's various other food items we have planned um, that uh, yeah, we can swing by um, after the cafeteria is closed and there is free food available. And then finally, um, Umo, I keep saying it's Umo, but I think it's Umo, <laughs> um, is the contactless app. So more information will be coming out really in the next week about this uh, to your inboxes. And there is a switch from BC Transit from um, issuing a sticker on the UPass card to using a contactless app, a bit like um, if you've used the online Compass card for um, TransLink. But um, you'll basically download the app and you will show that when you are using Transit instead of your card. Um, so we'll be sending out more instructions on how you download the app, how that's all going to work. Um, but to give you a brief idea, you will need to be checking your email because you'll receive a beneficiary code. And that's a number that's specific to you. And you'll need to add that to the app to activate your UPass. Um, but as I say, there's been quite a lot of prep um, for this coming and uh, yeah, that will happen for uh, the summer semester. So in the next couple of weeks, ready for May. Um, thank you. So um, I want to thank all of the students um, for you coming today as well and for waiting uh, at the beginning. Uh, our executives, our board of our directors who are here as well, our operational team and UFE who are really supportive of the work that we do. Um, and everyone's collaboration is really kind of instrumental um, in these achievements. It's what we've achieved together. Um, so thank you. See, we had some questions uh, during the presentation. We'll definitely make sure to answer those questions during the question period at the very end of the presentation. So if you do have something, just note it down and we'll make sure to get back to it. Ashley, over to you for executive goal plan update. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, yes, yeah, so, 
I'm Ashley and I'm your Student Union Society President. Um, I'm excited to give you an overview of the goals that the executive team has been able to accomplish this year. So this team, the team this year was made up of myself as president, Jaden Hovey as vice president external, and Gabriela Vertimer Chenque as um, vice president students. So I'd just like to begin by thanking you for your support of the work we do at SUS and our executive goal pillars of advocacy, governance, and engagement. We have been able to amplify the student voice through our work under these pill pillars, and it wouldn't be able to happen without your support. So the first area of our goal plan I'll talk about is advocacy. So I'll start with provincial advocacy. One of our main advocacy goals this year was strengthening our independent voice in provincial advocacy. Over the term, we had 11 meetings with members of the BC government, ranging from MLAs to ministers to the premier, which allowed us to discuss with them various issues UFE students are facing and propose solutions to fix them. We produced our first ad advocacy document provincially titled Setting Student Success, which highlights four key priorities, student housing, food insecurity and financial aid, campus sexualized violence and misconduct policy, and predictability for international students. Um, so we also had institutional advocacy initiatives. We were able to work with UFE to review and update the UFE sexualized violence policy, which had not been updated since 2017. We also successfully um, advocated for the inclusion of a standalone trauma-informed procedure for this policy, which will be updated on their website soon. As well, we have been continually working and advocating with UFE for updates to safety and accessibility features on campus, such as lighting, doors, ramps, and pedestrian crossing, especially during the current construction that is undergoing for the new residency building. So um, for federal advocacy, um, this, our federal advocacy work is done with the Canadian Alliance of Student Associations, or CASA, which SUS is a member of. Our federal advocacy priorities this year consisted of the removal of interest on uh, federal student loans, funding for campus mental health supports and initiatives, student aid funding, and the removal of the 20-hour cap on working hours for international students. Over this term, the federal government removed interest on federal student loans and extended the removal of the cap on working hours for international students from December 2023 to August 2024. So in our work with, um, with CASA and with other student unions across the country, we've been able to see some pretty big wins this year and it's something to be proud of um, and something that has been worked hard for by a lot of student groups, including ours. Um, next, for Know Your Rights and Find Your Fees, for those of you who are not familiar, Know Your Rights is a SUS campaign centered around breaking down UFE's policies, procedures, and services into a more comprehensible format for students. This year, we produced one new episode of Know Your Rights on UFE's student housing services, which discuss safety, engagement, services, appeals, and more related to student housing. You can find this on our website, ufvsus.ca, or on our YouTube channel. Um, this term, our team also conceptualized Find Your Fees, which is a video series designed to break down where student fees go. Um, and this project is still in the process of being developed. So next I will highlight some of our accomplishments in governance. So this term we accomplished our goal of holding a by-election which filled eight student representative at large positions and our indigenous student representative position. Um, each of our directors, um, our student at large directors picked a mandate which allowed them to represent specific groups of students on campus, such as international students, students living in UFE housing, students with accessibility needs and more. We were also able to fill our Indigenous representative position, as I mentioned. So another goal that we were able to accomplish is making our archives more accessible. This year, we successfully digitized and um, archived all past AGM and Board of Director meeting minutes onto our website, and we are committed to ensuring that these archives are continually updated. We also hosted our first executive office hours. This was a way of creating more transparency and openness for our students between um, the SAS Board of Directors, SAS Executive, and um, students. It also uh, served as a way to foster connection between the executive team and our student body. Last but not least is engagement. Um, so Olivia mentioned a lot of our accomplishments with clubs and associations, but I'll just quickly highlight them um, as well. This year we moved administration of clubs and associations or CNAs onto the platform QPay. Um, we hosted training sessions for CNAs on how to use QPay and other general information on how to run a club and association. 
Um, we also launched the Clubhouse, which is a space for clubs and associations to host their meetings and events and to just generally connect. Uh, one of our other large goals was to improve our Chilliwack campus engagement. Um, this year we hosted the first Backyard Bash event at the Chilliwack campus to foster connection within the Chilliwack campus community and celebrate the end of the semester. We also ran a, re a weekly breakfast program in Chilliwack providing breakfast to students at both the CEP and Trades campuses. This year, we su successfully held our third annual kickback event to welcome students back to campus in September with food and games. Kickback is a great way for students to form connections at the beginning of the school year, and we're very happy that we were able to see this event, event come to fruition again this year. Um, Olivia also touched on the student perks program, um, and we're really happy to share that we have worked with local businesses across the Fraser Valley to secure discounts for students, and we added eight new location, locations and held the student perks market in the fall to showcase the discounts student, students can access. Um, this year, we also continued many of our partnerships to provide fun events for students. These partnerships include the Abbotsford Canucks, where we offer discounted tickets to students, and many UFE departments, such as UFE International, UFE Campus Rec, um, UFE Sustainability, and more. In partnership with them, we've hosted many events, such as Holy, Backyard Flicks, um, the Cultural Market, Carnival, and many more. Thank you all again for your support of our team's goals this year and for trusting us to serve the student body. Um, I'm happy to take any questions about our goals um, during the question period happening after this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ashley. the moment everybody has been waiting for the question period so how we're gonna do this is if anybody has any questions or any discussion items uh, we're gonna have one person from our team who will come up to you with a microphone and then feel free to ask any questions you might have for our team and feel free to ask any questions whether it's uh, our 2023 annual report the executive goal plan that Ashley just presented the floor is yours Number 61, yes. Uh, how will the UMO app work with the city rec centers? Um, just, oh, I believe uh, they usually go by the sticker. Will it be so the same with the app? Yep, that's a great question. Um, yes, so we have worked with the um, rec centers, uh, just finalizing that um, actually this week. Um, but what you will do is you will show the UMO app on your phone and your student ID. So instead of the sticker, it's essentially the app that you will show. Thanks Thank for you. Asking. Great question. Number 15, yes. Summer sports show was also was a really good event. So I would love to see more engagement and continuation of event of that event too, because it was I think such a great turnout, and it is very open to improve because the weather is good. So I would love to see that happening. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll just quickly respond to that. Yeah, no, thank you, Mehmet. I, I appreciate that. It was a huge, successful event, and um, yeah, I hope to see it continue as well. That's number 59. Um, hi. Um, so for the 20-plus um, so plus hours of work for international students, that's counting for outside campus job, right? And everything? Yes, yeah, so those are for off-campus work hours. Um, my understanding is that it is unlimited, the number of hours students can work on campus for international students. So that will, when will that be taken? Like um, The end of August of this year. So it was originally um, December 2023, so this past December, and it was extended to the end of August. Okay, thank you. Sorry, can I just get you to hold your number up again? 59. 
Yes, number 31. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you. As a new student, seeing the uh, financial report there and the uh, some of the surpluses, uh, your guys' efforts to be transparent about that is pretty important to me. So I'd like to congratulate you on that and keep that sort of attitude in mind when you're passing your policies. Thank you. I, I appreciate you saying that. We are very committed to transparency. And um, I also likewise appreciate your attendance at an event like this. Number 35. Yeah, just to build off of that statement, and I was like, I'm really happy with the presentation and everything everyone said today. Um, Ashley, you mentioned like archive accessibility. And I know for a fact, like some of the financial reports actually aren't available on the website for students to access. Will those like missing documents be filled in over the course of the year? Yes, um, absolutely. All of our audited financial statements are available under our archive section of the website. Um, and the documents seen here today will absolutely be there as long as, as well as our annual report, which will be updated. Uh, the 2019-2020 does not have a financial report listed. Thank you for letting us know. That's something we can look into and have made available on the website. Okay, awesome. Number 62. Again, uh, once again, thank you for your presentation. I did have a question about QPay for clubs and associations. So, is there, like, are there efforts to improve QPay? Because currently the system of using that for clubs is not very good. And many, I, I've heard that many people avoid, like, attending events purely because of the process they have to go through on QPay. Yeah, thanks so much for that, that question. So QPay as a platform is kind of bespoke to us. So there is flexibility in what we can add to the platform. I think acknowledging that there has been frustration is, is something that we want to do. Um, we want to use QPay to make it easier, not to make it a barrier. So through the focus groups that we'll be running over the next couple of months, we're wanting to really get the specific feedback. So kind of right now, we understand that it is, is problematic and we, we know a few of the uh, of the teething issues, but we really want to get to the heart of the problem. So those focus groups will meet with the um, executives of the clubs and associations to really determine, okay, what needs to change? How can we change it? How can we make it, you know, as a, as a tool for, for good and, and not a barrier? Um, so if that kind of answers your question, but um, yeah, we, we're working on that. But QPay is a flexible app, so it's not, it's not fixed if um, they have web development developers that can can make it do the things that we need to do and that's that's why it holds the cost so as soon as we um, know the answers to those questions then we we can work on the development and, and their development process is pretty quick so once we let them know the changes their turnaround is, is within a couple of weeks perfect thank you Thanks. number 50 yes so can you do something for the 66 patients students which comes from Surrey bus service 66 sorry you're referring to the students who take route 66 from surrey yeah oh, okay Yep, I can speak to that. So that's um, the Fraser Valley Express. So um, where we are right now in the process is we're pushing BC Transit for a pilot program. Uh, they will not run the fo full program initially. It has to run through a pilot. Um, and that will look something like a UPass extension. So at a significantly lower cost than the $10 a day that the uh, uh, FBX costs right now, um, at a reduced um, rate, it will be offered as a optional part to the UPASS. So it's something we're very committed to. We acknowledge the need. Um, some of the complexities, so you're, you're aware around the Fraser Valley Express, is that when we were hoping to launch the pilot, they then actually extended it to run through to um, Lougheed Station. So they increased the route. Um, they also rely slightly different to the regular BC Transit route. They rely on um, municipal funding. Um, so it's not just between us and BC Transit, it's all of the cities involved in the route that actually have to sign off on the pilot project. So that's 
essentially why it's taking so long. There are a few barriers to, to that happening. Um, but yeah, we're committed to, to making it happen and, and advocating it for it. And, and BC Transit do have a plan for us to run that pilot. It's just the timeline, unfortunately, keeps getting um, pushed back. Um, but yeah, it's our, it's, it's as soon as the AGM is over, it's, a, it's our new agenda to work with BC Transit. The, the UMO app will roll out over the next couple of weeks and we don't feel that there'll be any, uh, there should be any more reason or resistance to, to starting that up. Thank you. Yes, number six. Um, I had a question about the surplus in our budget. Um, from looking online, it looks like our student fees are going up and the surplus is going up as well. I'm just wondering if there's why the student fees are going up, what you're doing with the surplus and what the plan with that is. Yeah, I can speak to that. So most of the, so our surplus for general operating costs right now is under $10,000, which really just is a, as a buffer as, as things change in a kind of a high inflation economy. Um, but where you see that large amount of surplus is to um, basically protect the organization and the restricted funds that we offer. So the, the two large amounts for that surplus are the um, building fee and also the uh, shuttle transportation fee. So the, the building fee, although it looks like a surplus, we have to have a, a significant reserve for the for this building um like our, our hope would be to be have a couple of million dollars surplus if there's something that happens with the roof uh we're, we're already sort of like hitting the millions mark <laughs> with it um so the the building's only 10 years old so we haven't experienced much maintenance cost but we need to make sure that it's there um otherwise we would have to go to a a referendum to, to get more money later on. So the idea is that we get the surplus now. Um, and uh, while our fees have not increased, they are increasing through CPI. Um, uh, we shift the, the building fee to actually lower that down and increase the membership fee. So there wouldn't be any more costs to um, students. But the, the CPI rate, 3.9% inflation costs will hit in the fall. Uh, and they will also um, cover those um, costs. Um, and then regarding just the shuttle transportation, the reason that we're running um, a surplus for that too is to make sure that when uh, this contract ends and we have to renew the contract, we know that there will be an increase in costs. So the buffer that we create now will hopefully prevent the long-term significant increase of those costs. It's also allowing us to kind of relook at those um, the, the routes that have uh, heavy usage to see if we can add an additional shuttle bus. Um, uh, um, what um, adding on kind of electronic readers would look like to the, the shuttle bus. So it's really making sure that we have the flexibility and are not running uh, into a situation where we have to go to a referendum and fees are like $10, $20 um, more. Um, also, we're actually running a comparison right now between ourselves and other student unions and the student union fees are here are significantly less than the majority of associations and unions around BC and around Canada. So quite proud of that. But we also, just because we're, we're the best value, doesn't mean we want, we want to up them. We, we do want to keep the fees um, reasonable. And there are no plans at the moment to in increase any fees below, above CPI. Thank you. Yes, number 28. Um, so I have a question about like the app that you're going to introduce for, you know, the you pass or the Uvo app. It just, it's confusing to me it, it, if it is just going to be like an alternative or is like going to eradicate you, like the sticker entirely. Cause I mean, not personally, like I can download the app, but I can think about a few people that might have more difficulty doing it that way. So I'm just asking if both of them can work or uh, yeah. That's oh, thanks for the question. No, totally ag agree with you. Um, the the Umo app is um, is a BC Transit led project. Um, we are basically responding to the need to change, um, and they are um, uh, discontinuing the sticker system. Um, so we've had to work with that. Um, that said. Um, there, we acknowledge that there will be issues with people that don't have um, phones and for whatever reason. So they are issuing us with cards. So there will be a UMO card for those that can't download the app on a mobile device. We'll have full instructions out with that. That card actually, you'll come to our office and we will help the person activate it. And so they will show that instead of the app. Uh, and that card will be stickered for use for the shuttle service. So great question. Thank you for asking. Thank you. <laughs> 
Yes, number 61. So just to clarify, instead of using the current card that we all have, like the UPASS card with the sticker, we would then get a different card if we needed it instead of the app. So then someone who wouldn't have the app maybe would then have to handle two different cards. Unfortunately, yes, that is, that is the case. So the um, because they are um, discontinuing the sticker system. So right now it's the student ID is stickered for the UPASS. Uh, if someone is not able to download the app, of which there might be a variety of reasons for, they will be issued with an UMO card, which will be a bit like um, TransLink's version of the Compass card. So those two things will be need to show um, when you enter like the bus route for BC Transit. Um, so we have worked tirelessly on providing kind of figuring out different solutions, um, but that would be the, the only other option to downloading the app would be to have a secondary card. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Number 62. Yeah, quick question about that. So what does that mean for like the ARC and MRC if we no longer have that sticker? How do we still get access to that? Um, so uh, uh, we touched on this a little bit earlier, but basically what you would do is you would show the, the screenshot of your app and your student ID. So those two items together um, will allow you um, access to the recreation center. And if you don't have the app, you will show your card um, and it will have been yeah, activated and will have a sticker on it um, to show that it has been activated. Perfect, thank you. And just to, to say that we are um, we have all of our communications around this out shortly, as I said in my presentation in the next couple of weeks. So there will be detailed information, but we're also always available at the info desk for any questions. We know that lots of things will come up as we, we try and um, navigate a new process together. So please do come and visit us or give us a call or shoot us an email and we will figure out any issues. Do we have any more questions? Yes, 35. Hi, yeah, just back to the budget and the uh, surplus, especially like as it pertains to um, uh, the payroll. With the removal of one of the executive members earlier in the year, one of the elected members, um, was their salary given back in the surplus or is that put somewhere else? Like where was that accounted for? That was up. Yep, great question. Um, so um, at the moment, we haven't closed our final year end to figure out what the final surplus is for this year. So um, when Karen did his um, uh, report, it was a snapshot of where we are to date. And uh, so we don't have the exact surplus numbers, but you are correct, there will be surplus um, available from that role um, where possible we try and reinvest that um, back into student funding. Um, but when a surplus number has been finalized for the last financial year, our board meet to discuss the uses of that surplus fund. Um, but I can confirm that that surplus fund will not go back into payroll. It will go back into student funds or like operating costs uh, for students. So it, it won't be payroll. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Do we have any other questions in the audience? Yes, 41. I just want to say thank you for uh, you were advocate, advocating for interest-free loans. Is that right? Something like that? just want to say thank you. That's really cool. I also saw a poster for uh, anti-procrastination night or something like that. And there was the, the writing center. And I think those are, are really, really helpful things for our students. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Yeah, the um, advocacy for interest-free loans has been going on for a long time, so we were really happy to see that win um, earlier uh, in the term. So thank you. And yeah, our long night for procrastination is happening tonight. So if anyone's struggling with procrastination, we'll be doing it right here in this building. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Of course. Yeah, would you mind just holding up your number one more time so we can note it down, the previous person that asked a question? 41, thank you so much, yes. And I think I saw the question. 42. Oh. Let's sneak up on this. All right. So I was wondering, uh, is the build, is the construction budget handled by the SUS organization? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so for the construction of what's going on in UFE right now, that's all of their budget. The only thing that we do for construction is on site for the SUS building. So last year, the construction budget for our own was just for the fairgrounds prep kitchen, um, but we don't have any involvement in the UFE construction, if that was your question. But if not, please oh, <laughs> let okay. me know. All right, where do I go and find, I, I'm just curious and all. So where do I go find information about that? Yeah, I believe um, UFE has made their budgets public as well. I know they also hold um, town halls. Um, I don't know exactly what dates those would be um, around, but I think that you can find it on the UFE website. All right, cool. Thank you. Any other questions? Final remarks? All right, seeing no more questions. Again, thank you for so much insightful comments and questions. Really, really helps for sure. I think uh, at the very beginning, something we mentioned is that we will be having a giveaway. And uh, for all the lovely people that attended today, there's a chance to win an iPad. And that's something that we're going to be doing right now. Spinning the magical wheel. Number nine. Do we have a number nine here? Oh. Yeah. Lucky person, congratulations. So, yes, so we don't have the iPad yet, but we will take down your information and we will contact you about how to receive it. Thank you. Yeah, we do. It will be a real iPad. Yeah, I was going to say, we don't have it right here, but it is on site, so you will get it today. <laughs> so if you go to the front desk after the meeting, we will make sure that you are united with your new iPad. Thank you. Congratulations. And again, huge thank you to everybody that attended today. It's amazing to see people in person attending meetings like this. It really means a lot to us and the entire team. And thank you to the entire team for the amazing work you've done the entire year. It uh, is a lot for our students. It means a lot for our community too. Huge round of applause for you guys. Oh yes, and something I should announce is we do have food as I promised. It is just on the right side of this room. So if you go behind this door, to the left or right side, there's gonna be food there as well from Lev's Farm Market. And it's easier if you enter through the back side again. Thank you everybody for attending and I officially close the meeting at 1.30 p.m. <laughs>